as the Greek philosopher Heraclitus says, change is the only constant in life. <laughs> Man, how I wish that this weren't true because I'm a admittedly a little bit of a control freak, but I have just found in business, in motherhood, in all the things, change is inevitable. And especially if you're listening to this in real time, you know, end of summer 2021, you know, there's a lot of changes going on on social media and I find that there's a lot of anxiety around it. And it's been something that I've been holding space for my clients for. And so I just wanted to come here and hold space for this too. If you are going through change in your life or you are worried about online changes that are happening, let's talk about it. Let me give you a pep talk. Let me say everything is gonna be okay. And I cannot wait to share this Facebook Live replay that I did with you that got a lot of good um, feedback and really was like, Anna, this is just what I needed to give me a little bit of ease and help me really practically plan for how my business is going to adapt to this change. I was listening to a recent podcast too that was basically saying a lot of entrepreneurship is birthed out of adversity, right? So in some ways, you know, we don't want difficulty in business, but a lot of times the difficulty is what produces the goodness, right? The pressure is what produces the diamond. And so I want to encourage you, whatever change you're going through right now, I just want you to first give yourself some credit for it. Can you even say it out loud, whether you're in the car listening to this podcast or on a walk? What's the change in your life or the adversity that you are facing? Um, Maybe by your choosing, maybe not. Maybe this just kind of happened to you and it just came upon you. I'll give you a minute to just give yourself some credit for what the challenge that you are facing right now. Okay, I'm glad you gave yourself some credit. I'm gonna give you a pep talk here and also some incredible practical tips for how to adjust and how to be agile. Um, But first, I wanted to walk you through a visualization that I've been doing lately um, in my life. Um, I'm not the best meditator, though I wish I were, though I am really good at visualizing. I'm really good at my gratitude practice and I'm really good at um, grounding myself. And one of my favorite Uh, visualizations is imagining a beam of light, almost like a laser beam passing through me, almost like an x-ray scanning you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And I just like visualize this. And as it goes through my body, I just imagine all the stress releasing. And I just think about, am I holding any tension in my head, in my shoulders, you know, in my stomach as it goes down? And I almost imagine it. (laughs) as a tube of toothpaste. You know how like when you're squeezing out the last bit of toothpaste, you're like getting all of it out of there. That's just what I kind of imagine is just like really gently releasing all the tension from my body. So I'm gonna walk you through this really quickly so that you can release any tension you're holding and then you can just open up your heart to what I'm gonna share in this training today. Um, Again, just some practical tips around how to plan your visibility, how to plan your marketing and how to thrive in this next season. Okay, so I want you to just start by taking a deep breath, hopefully the deepest one you've taken today so far. I took one with you too. And then I just want you to visualize a beam of light starting at the top of your head, passing through your cheeks, through your chin, your shoulders, and as it passes through, it's just gently kind of combing any stress out. It's sifting any tension, any worry, any heaviness down your chest, your tummy, your upper legs, your knees, your lower legs. Maybe even wiggle your toes as it passes through your feet and just ah, trust that you can see a little clearer and think a little clearer now. And feel free to like do that again if you need to as many times as you need to, you know, really like raking through the sand and clearing out any rocks that were just like, you know what? You're not being very helpful right now. I don't need you. I just need some, some clarity of mind as I think through this change that I'm facing. 
Okay, my love, I hope that this was helpful for you. And I hope that this next treating that I'm gonna play right now is helpful for you. And feel free to um, message me on Instagram or Facebook and let me know what stood out from you for you. I would love to hear it. Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Hi, hi, happy Thursday. (laughs) I'm laughing because this live is called Instagram Changes and How to Roll with the Punches. And I just got halfway through my live stream and we had a little glitch, but you know what? We're just trusting that that was a dress rehearsal and this is going to be, you know, even better for you. So hi, hi. If you are joining me live, please say hello. I would love to chat with you and hang out and just have this beautiful conversation about your visibility and the next um, season and doing it in a way that so honors you. And um, especially in context of some of the changes that Instagram has been introducing, right? Making a statement that's literally, I listened to it, you know, last week that says like, hey, we are a video platform. Like this is what we're doing, you know? And anytime there's a shift in, and I think it's also remembering, especially for if you're like sensitive or you're an empath, would you like wave at me? Because I think especially if you're intuitive or sensitive, it's an important distinction. There are two types of changes or transitions that can happen in our life, okay? One, some changes happen like within us, right? Like a lot of, <laughs> a lot of my clients go through really big changes while they're working with me, okay? Like having children, like going through relationship shifts, right? Like quitting a job, like it's just kind of part of the job, right? Those are examples of internal shifts. Hi, hi, Michelle. How are you? So fun to see you on here. There's also external shifts that may happen like COVID, right? Like things in our world, things in our globe, and especially because news and media is so much easier to access than it has been before, there's a lot of external things that can stress us out, right? But I think it's important to make a distinction, like what's actually happening to me? Not that we can't care about what's happening in the world, we should, but I think it is important to see like, okay, what's affecting me and what is a global thing that's happening, right? Um, okay. So that being said, I get that it's easy to be concerned when there's shifts in social media about like, you know, feeling like (laughs) I, what I'm going to share with you basically is three things that you might be getting stuck in eight reminders of what social media through the times, no matter what platform it is, no matter, you know, what year it is, like eight truths about social media that I want to root you into that never change. And then also I want to remind you um, of two things you can do to, if you are feeling stuck or overwhelmed or paralyzed, specifically with the Instagram changes, but also just in life in general. (laughs) Okay. So let's dive in. And if you're watching the replay, would you say hey to me? Would you comment along? I love connecting with you. Okay. So three things you might be getting stuck in is if I don't do this new thing that's presented to me, I won't be successful right? If I don't do reels, if I don't do live video, if I don't do blogging. And here's the thing about online business is there's so many visibility strategies, podcasts, right? But it's remembering my success doesn't hinge upon me doing any one singular visibility strategy, right? Come with me for a second on this tangent, right? If I were to force you and say, okay, my love, you can only use an email list to give value and to connect and to sell. Guess what? You'd figure it out, right? Let's say I said, okay, email lists don't exist anymore. Somehow they got demolished from the planet, right? You can only use social media, 
right? You would figure out how to, again, do these eight principles I'm going to share and show up and build a relationship and sell, right? Let's say for a second, the internet imploded, which I don't think will happen. And you know, I'm a big fan of social media, right? But let's just say for a minute, the internet imploded. You could build relationships offline, give value, and you could sell, right? business existed before the internet. So it's just remembering that like when changes come online, like maybe you're having to switch social media platforms. Maybe you're having to stay on the same platform, but you're switching a certain strategy, right? I also hear this from my clients when they're switching businesses. Maybe they're doing one business and they're shifting to another business and it can feel like, oh my gosh, like, um, you know, and this isn't, so this is another thing you can stuck in, which is like, I'm starting from scratch, right? Everything's new, which why is it wrong to be a newbie? It's okay. Be a little humble, right? But remembering you bring your momentum with you. You bring your knowledge with you when you shift platforms, when you switch strategies, when you switch businesses, right? Here from my clients all the time, like I'm starting from scratch, but like when you do one business and then you start your second business, you are bringing all of that knowledge and that know-how and the expertise with you. Same thing if you're starting a business for the first time. When you think about your day job, you are bringing every Everything that you did in your day job, all those skills, all of those lessons for better and for worse into your business, right? And I think we like think that it's super unrelated, but it's more related than you give yourself credit for, right? Okay, my loves, Michelle says, yes, 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 right? It's just the truth. Okay, so you might be getting stuck in, if I don't do a specific strategy, I won't be successful. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try new strategies because I think that you should, right? But it's not from this like grabby energy of like, oh my gosh, if I don't do this, the world's gonna end. No, you should try it because maybe it'll be fun. Maybe it'll resonate with you as an experiment, but not like if I don't do this, then X, Y, Z. Does that make sense? Second one is, you know, I shared it. I'm starting out from scratch, right? Bah. Third one is, if I want to try this new thing, this new strategy, I have to be perfect at it overnight and I have to go from like zero to 100, right? (laughs) So maybe it's reels, like maybe you're getting into reels, right? And you think like, okay, in order to do my first reel, I have to have my 15 reels planned out. I have to figure out how they're gonna exactly align with everything I'm doing. And it's really paralyzing instead of like, I just got to do my first reel or I've not even got to do my first reel. I've just got to plan it. Right. And I have seen this with women in visibility in so many ways, no matter what the platform. Right. And it really is giving yourself permission just to start smaller, even though the and then here's the reason why I think we resist starting small, because it becomes more practical, right? (laughs) I remember I was encouraging one of my clients that had like a 5K income goal. I was like, well, let's first make our first income goal 3K because she wasn't hitting that yet. And she was like, oh, that's scarier. And I was like, okay, let's talk about this. Why is hitting 3K months scarier than hitting 5K months? And she said, because it's doable. Like, I feel like I could actually do it. I could actually hit 3K, right? So I think sometimes we make it complicated because it keeps us safe instead of like, oh, one reel? I could actually do that, right? That's not that hard. Instead, we make it this like big complicated thing. And so remembering anytime you're doing something new, number one, it's probably gonna suck at first, right? (laughs) Anytime you do anything new, when a baby starts to walk, right? When you learn to swim, it's gonna be a little messy and that's okay. And can you be humble and be okay with that and not make it mean anything about you? Can you actually make it mean something good about you that you're trying something new, that you're stepping out there, right? (laughs) Michelle said that this, this is, me. Like, this is all of us, right? And I think I was thinking about this the other day because I, you know, was doing like online fitness during COVID. And then recently I got back to in-person fitness and you guys, (laughs) so embarrassing. I am in a workout class. I've been doing bar and Pilates and I am by far the worst in the room. Like it's not even close. Like these girls are so good, so strong, so fit. We're like doing this like move, like this Pilates move where you like do this teaser where you put your feet in the air and this, uh, this thing, you know, and like, they're all like nailing it and I'm struggling, you know, but I think there's something, you know, our brain wants to keep us safe, but instead it's remembering like when I'm struggling, when I'm like the worst person in the room, maybe that's something good about me because it means that I'm stretching and I'm putting myself out there. Right. And I think especially as like high achieving women, we have this temptation where it's like, 
you know, well, I should be grateful for what I have. Like, I guess my day job is pretty good. Or I guess I'm making money in my business. Why should I want more? Instead of being like, it's okay to want more. It's okay to play bigger. It's okay to be the, you know, not smartest person in the room. And it's okay to stretch, right? And honestly, like that's some of the fun. And so I think it's like making that right about you instead of like wrong about you. Okay. Let me know if that's resonating. Let me know what's something in your life too in the comments that you feel like you are a newbie at. And how can you brag about that, right? And what good modeling it is for our clients, for our kids to see us struggle at things, right? Okay, next I wanna share with you eight things that social media will always be about. And as I read these eight things, you're probably gonna be like, Oh yeah, duh. (laughs) I already do a lot of these, right? Or maybe you have a gap or two, but I hope that this gives you confidence, right? If you are in the middle of like switching social media strategies or switching platforms or whatever it is, remembering at the end of the day, social media will always be about, are you ready for it? Are you ready for this list? Number one, clearing visibility blocks. And by the way, this is what we study in Visible Impact. This is the framework because I really believe that at the end of the day, if you get locked in on these things, visibility becomes so much easier no matter what platform you do. Trust me, over the last five years of my business, I've done a shift or two when it comes to platforms, when it comes to strategies, but these foundations never change my love never change. Christine says, trying out reels, now feeling old. Yes, Christine. And so it's like celebrating that, right? Like celebrating, like I'm trying something new and it's outside of my comfort zone, but look at me go and I'm going to do it. Right. I love that. Okay. This is what social media will always be about no matter what the platform. So even if you're trying something new, it's remembering you're bringing something with you, right? Always be about clearing your visibility blocks. That means getting so clear on what is your Any sort of strategy is going to be so much easier when you clear your fear, right? When you ask yourself, what is most intimidating about this new strategy or thing or platform or offer or whatever, right? It might be something like, and let me know in the chat box what it is for you right now. Like maybe you're like, what if I look silly or what if I do it and spend all my time on it and it doesn't work and I waste my time, right? Um, getting really clear on like, what's the fear? What's the blocks? It may be like, what if I'm visible in this way and strangers see me and comment? Or it might be, what if people that know me see me and comment? Which one is more intimidating for you? I want to know. Um, clearing visibility blocks. Next is creating a simple six-week content plan, right? And honestly, that's why I like to content plan six weeks at a time because you may shift your plan. You may shift your strategy. And so it's less about feeling like I have to have one social media strategy that's going to be the same from now until forever. But like I have this system of every six weeks creating a simple plan for myself, right? Next is messaging. Remember, even if you switch strategies, even if you're going from, you know, Facebook to Instagram, or you're going from lives to stories or stories to reels, your messaging that you have refined, especially if you have an existing business, you get to take that with you, right? You are not starting from scratch with that. Next is the skill of pre-creating and batching content is e essential is essential. There's no way that I would be in business for the length of time I am if I didn't master really batching my content in advance and really creating it in advance so that I feel like I have freedom in my life and freedom in my schedule. Okay. Next is giving massive value. I don't care what platform you show up on. I don't care if it's your email list, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever online business, social media will always be about giving massive value, right? And then the other part, you know, I'm going to say this, you know, it's coming, sharing your paid offers, right? Doing both is so important. Okay. Other one is connecting with humans in an authentic way. And so making sure you're, yes, being visible, right? But then also you're doing the connection piece. And I think because we get spammy DMs from people or spammy PMs, right? We forget that like we can still connect in a heart-centered way. And so I really want you to ask yourself, which do I need more of? Do I need to get more visible so I actually have humans to connect with so I'm not being spammy, right? When people like DM us out of the blue, the reason that feels weird is because there was no, they weren't visible in front of us first. There was no prior connection, right? Or is it that you're like, no, actually I am visible, but I'm not doing that connection piece. And then finally, solid system so that you can repurpose, organize, get your team to help you, right? Okay, my loves. 
Um, so I've got two suggestions for you on the thing that you're, if you're working on something right now that feels new, that feels scary, that feels like a stretch, that feels overwhelming, okay? And I think that these are going to massively help you. Number one, you know what I'm gonna say, is working your mindset, right? Really working on that belief of, you know, this is what I wrote. I can do this. I always figure it out. This is easy. It's safe to make mistakes. Like we were talking about, it's safe to be a newbie. It's safe to stretch out of my comfort zone, right? And then the second one is a game changer. And it is making the action smaller, right? Like we talked about, we have this tendency to want to make our new action really big or really epic or really planned out instead of actually shrinking your action. When my clients have resistance to something, Number one, I don't make them wrong for it because we all have fears, we all have resistance, but I almost always, this is a great tip if you're a coach and you feel like you have a client and you feel like, why are they resistant? This is so easy. Why can't they just do it, right? Make the action smaller. Make the action easier, right? If you are working on doing reels for the first time in your business, instead of feeling like you have to plan 12 reels, just plan one reel and give yourself a deadline, Yes, my love, give yourself a deadline. Make the action smaller and put a deadline on it. So I want you to ask yourself right now in your business, what is it that you're avoiding? Maybe it's like a client project you're supposed to get done for a client, right? Maybe it is um, some sort of marketing piece for your own business, right? Ask yourself, how can I make it smaller and how can I attach a deadline to it? Those, I mean, that's just key, right? Because there are two ways to get through a block in our business. Number one, we can do our mindset work to make the action easier. We can also start taking the smaller action to change our beliefs. Let me say that again. We can do our mindset work, right? This is easy. This is fun. I can do it. Also, we can take a little bit of action to start changing our thoughts in the way that we believe. Let me give you an example, okay? So let's say for a second that you are, oh, it's an example. I'm trying to think of an example from my own life on this. Okay, so an example from this on my own life is I'm not very good at running, but I want to get better at running. This is true. <laughs> this is true, okay? Um, and I can do the mindset work all day, every day that says, I love running. I'm great at running. But it, I also have a hard time believing that. Like, let's just be real, right? And so what I have been doing is I've been trying to go on like quarter mile runs, <laughs> womp womp, like very short runs, right? But what that does is when you take a little bit of action, number one, it takes you a little bit out of the paralysis. Because when we're paralyzed, so many of our fears are these hypothetical fears and we start troubleshooting and brainstorming and fixing these things that aren't even a problem because it's just a hypothetical fear. We don't even know if it's going to happen or not, right? So when we get into the action, we we surpass that hypothetical fear, but we also start to change our beliefs, right? When you go on that quarter mile run, you can be like, oh, actually, that isn't that bad, right? When you do your first reel, you can be like, oh, actually, that was a little embarrassing, but I didn't die, right? Like, it's, uh, I want to give you permission that like, I am all for mindset work. I do mindset work every day. I do a ton of mindset work with my clients. But I think sometimes we can swing the other way when we feel and we put the pressure on ourselves to have to feel perfect, to have to feel confident, to have to feel like on point before we take action where here's the truth. My most successful clients take action all the time, even when they're not feeling it even when they're scared, even when they're feeling unprepared, right? Because as you start to take tiny baby actions, and I'm telling you, like you break it down so tiny, that's where you start to change your belief and your identity. And you start to be like, oh yeah, duh, this is easy. Yes, I can do it because I am doing it, right? And so if there's something you're stuck around right now, again, don't make it bigger, make it smaller and add a deadline. Okay, let me know in the comments what it is right now that maybe is something in your business that you're intimidated by, overwhelmed by, avoiding. Tell me what it is. I want to hear it. And then give yourself permission to make it smaller. Like, what's the step before the step? If you're avoiding going to the dentist, what if you first, you know, say, oh, my first step is to find a dentist. So I've got to text my girlfriends and look for a dentist referral, right? So I'm going to tell myself by this Friday, I'm going to send that text out to my girlfriends right? Do you see how you're making that smaller? Same thing This for my clients that have like never posted online on social media before, right? Instead of having them create a six-week content plan, which I'm all about a big content plan, right? Instead of making it big, you make it smaller by just saying, okay, how do I post on social media one time, right? And if you're scared to put a selfie, what if you just put like a, you know, a stock photo, you know? And so I think we, we, again, we, we shoot too big instead of shooting smaller. And I'm all 
for dreaming big again, like the example I was using about the client that like wanted to start hitting 5k months, I'm all for like shooting big, but I think also how do we, how do we shoot small enough where it's realistic, where it's doable and that we're hitting the small metrics on the way up, right? Again, if you've never hit that 3k month locking in, I make 3k months on the way to 5k months, right? You have to do the small thing on the way to the big thing. So you might as well lock in and work on it, right? Okay. I hope that this was helpful for you guys as you are thinking through whatever changes you are facing in your life, in your business. And if you want support around getting more visible in your business um, from this really solid foundational way, I would love to invite you to join the Visible Impact waitlist. So Visible Impact, in case you have never heard, is a six-week program that I run. Next round is in September and it's trans formative and immersive. And what it does is it's a foundational system. So you get access to a training mo- training library of videos and worksheets and templates and swipe files that makes social media marketing a lot easier. It also comes with weekly live calls, also comes with weekly workshops where you are actually um, able to create content in real time with me um, and a lot of other fun bonuses. So if you want to join the wait list, make sure that you do because I'm offering early registration, hundred bucks off when you join the wait list. So message me if you want the link for that, or you can find it at heartcenteredentrepreneur.com slash visible impact. Um, and would love to support you around this, around getting visible, right? in a really, in a way that feels um, aligned and easy. And the fun thing is I've actually run this program 10 times now. Is that wild? So wild. But the fun thing about it being able to stand the test of time, even through platform changes and shifts and growth is because again, it really is about the foundational principles of getting visible. Um, And then on top of that, the strategies to make that happen in a practical way. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free. And I cannot wait to see you in there.